Thank you so much for joining us as we are just two days away from PBC on Fox, emanating here from the Bridgestone Arena here in Nashville, Tennessee. We go live 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock local time, 5 Pacific time, and it features the homecoming of the super middleweight champion of the world, Caleb Sweet Hands Plant from right here in the Nashville area, putting his world championship on the line against the hard-hitting mandatory challenger from Germany, Vincent Wagenboots. Also, we have a stellar co-main event, and it features Brian Goodfellow Perella going head-to-head -head against Abel Ramos to begin the night. We have lightweight contender from right here in Nashville, Austin Dulay, putting his skills to the test against former title challenger Diego Magdaleno. Tickets for the event, they are going quickly, promoted by Sweet Hands Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Sourland Promotions on sale now, and you can purchase them at Ticketmaster.com. We have a sensational triple header, but for this opportunity, for this moment, the man to my right has always dreamed about fighting here in his hometown of Nashville, Tennessee. No matter where he goes all over the world, the one thing that resonates with him is Nashville. And now, as a world champion, he makes his second defense against a hard-hitting German fighter in Vincent Wagenboots. To begin the night, the lightweight division will be front and center as we have Diego Magdaleno going head-to-head -head against Austin Dulé. Let's look at Diego Magdaleno. 31 wins, 13 of those coming by way of knockout against three defeats. From Las Vegas, he has been a world title challenger at 130 and 135 pounds, two divisions, not an easy task whatsoever. He's won three of his last four fights outside of a defeat to current lightweight champion Teofimo Lopez. He constantly gets better. He gives you all that you can handle and some always in tip-top shape, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Diego Magdaleno. Hey guys, thank you for having me. Um, it's a, a big pleasure to be here. It's just another opportunity for me, you know what I mean? Flying away from Vegas, I'm, I'm no stranger to anything, any of the darkness, any of the, the, the brightness. I've been under the lights before plenty of times. I'm ready for this opportunity. It's just another a knock on the door, uh, on a new door for me to open up and, uh, you know, explore what, what's on the other side. I'm, um, you know, I did big changes uh, since my last fight. I've moved on and, you know, teamed up with Bones Adams, and I've been in the ring with, with Blair Cobbs, who's my teammate, getting ready for his fight. So uh, in the last two years, they've been undefeated as a team, and I'm, I'm, I'm new to the team, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming back with, with, uh, with something to prove. And uh, to do it here in Nashville in front of all, all of you people, millions of views, viewers, I'm going to be um, in tip-top shape and, uh, you know, showing – showing the world that uh, Fuego is, is here, and he's here to play. So um, with that being said, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to Saturday. Um, and, and, hey, I've always put my heart in every round and every round of the, the fight, so I'm just super eager and excited. I have a son back at home who's, who's waiting for me, and we'll be watching. And uh, he's super proud of his, of, of his dad, and it's one thing that I'm uh, ready to just rock and roll and do my work here. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Diego Magdaleno. Also behind me, I have the mascot from the Arena Football League franchise. Give it up for Sparky, ladies and gentlemen. Sparky in the house. And I tell you what, it's going to be hot inside the Bridgestone Arena with the amount of fans coming out to support the local hometown fighters and this stellar triple header live on Fox 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, 7 local time here at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. Now let's meet the adversary of Diego Magdaleno. Before we do that, I want to acknowledge his father, Fred Dulay, who's around here somewhere. Very proud father. Where is Fred? Let's give a round of applause to Fred Dulay, the trainer of Austin Dulay. 
They are embedded in the boxing culture here in Nashville. And, you know, Nashville is starting to become a fight town. It's no stranger that Nashville is a wonderful sports town. Look at the run that the Tennessee Titans had making it to the AFC Championship game. Uh, look at what the Nashville Predators were able to do a couple years ago, making it to the Stanley Cup final. And now with the likes of Caleb Plant and Austin Dulay, Nashville certainly should be very proud of what they've seen out of their professional athletes. This young man, 13 wins, 10 of those coming by way of knockout against one blemish. He's won his last two fights, both by knockout, and returns to fight in Nashville for the first time since 2017. I'll give you a quick story when it comes to Austin Dulay. His father, Fred Dulay, would tell me how they would fight here locally in front of two, 3,000 people, and of that, probably 95% of the crowd was there to see Austin Dulay. And that was at a smaller facility, but now to fight here at the Bridgestone Arena, and just 24 years of age, just goes to show you how far this young man has come and how much he wants to continue in his upward ascension at 135. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from right here in Nashville, here is Austin Dulé. What's going on, everybody? Uh, I just want to start by saying thank you to everybody for being here. Thank you to Diego for accepting the fight. Um, you know, we've been training our whole life for a moment just like this, you know, to prove what we have to offer to the sport. And, um, you know, I've been training my heart, like the hardest I've ever trained for this camp. Um, and we're just looking forward to Saturday night and showing the world what we got. Um, like I got, I got a great support team behind me and, and um, like I, also, I got my daughter at home too that, I, that I'm fighting for. So, you know, that, you know we're, we're real excited to be doing what we gotta do Saturday night. So thank you guys. Get it up for Austin Dulé. Really excited about seeing that matchup. That'll kick off the night, PBC on Fox at 8 Eastern, 7 local time. Our co-main event, we will be featuring the welterweight division. And as we all know, if you follow combat sports, the welterweight division is one of the glamour divisions in boxing. And we have a heck of a matchup between two guys who like to come and fight, and that is exactly what you are going to get on Saturday night. This man, 28 years of age from Casa Grande, Arizona, he's won his last seven pro fights. He's faced a number of top contenders, former champions, including a draw against Maurice Hooker, challenges of Jamal James, Regis Program. Ivan Baranchik, 25 wins, three losses, two draws, including 19 wins coming by way of knockout. When I would come to describe his style, I would say about Abel Ramos, he is aggressive and he is unrelenting. He's not going to stop. And boy, is this going to be a heck of a matchup against Brian Perella. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Abel Ramos. Hi, everybody. I uh, just want to, first of all, thank God for allowing me to be here and do what I do best. Um, I want to thank TGB Promotions for uh, allowing me to, to be in this event. I can't wait for Saturday night. Um, I also thank my manager, Andrew Zach, and my team, Jesus Ramos, my brother. He's, he's a he's brother and coach. And um, I just want to thank him for, for training me super hard for this fight. And I'm just, just proud to be here. Um, I'm ready to put on a show for you guys on Saturday night. Thank you. Abel Ramos, and now his opponent, 30 years of age from Fort Myers, Florida. He's won back-to-back -back fights, including most recently, having scored an impressive stoppage over Dominic Dalton on FS1 in July. And if you know Dominic Dalton, uh, it is very difficult to get a victory against him, much less to finish him off. And that is exactly what Brian Perella did. He has a fan-friendly style, loves to put you out. He has power in both hands. But also, what's interesting about Brian Perella, you see him wearing a track jacket now. He enters the ring every single time wearing a tuxedo jacket. I mean, the man is dressed to the nines every single time he makes his ring walks. But it's one thing to have style as you walk into the ring. It's another thing 
when that bell rings, do you have the ability to back it up? And I'll tell you, having known Brian Perella for many years, he certainly has that. This is a fantastic matchup, and he knows what's in front of him against Abel Ramos. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the always stylish Bryant Goodfella Perella. Good afternoon. It's Goodfella Perella, the contract killer. Saturday night, coming to put on a dynamic display of boxing. Uh, you know, I, I'm ready to go. I'm in there with a tough and experienced fighter, but he's never experienced what he's about to get in the ring with. I am the consummate athlete driven to conquer and succeed in this sport. Tune in, because Abel won't be able to do a damn thing. <laughs> they ain't ready for this spaghetti. Once again, thanks to all of my supporters, um, Al Heyman, TGB Promotions, everybody here on this card, uh, the beautiful city of Nashville. Uh, we're ready to go. The dream team is coming. Let's get it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian Goodfella Perella. That is our co-main event. Now on to our main event of the evening, the homecoming for Caleb Sweethands Plant. He has a very difficult challenge ahead of him as he takes on a man who is 24 years of age from Germany. He turned pro in 2011 at 16 years of age. He's been a pro for eight years. He's a former interim 168-pound titleist, enters this fight on a 10-fight win streak, including nine wins coming by way of knockout. His record overall, 31 wins, 28 of those by KO against just two losses. The one thing in life you can ask for is opportunity. And on Saturday night, this young man has the opportunity of a lifetime. Not saying in his mind he feels that an upset is going to happen. And we have seen upsets here in 2020. We will go back about a month's time when Jason Rosario finished off Julian Williams in his hometown of Philadelphia. Now, I know Caleb Plant has his sight set on other things to not have that happen, but this young man has the power in his hands, making his U.S. debut, and is very confident. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting German contender. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Vicente Wegenboots. Ich rede auf Deutsch. Also ich bin mit den Feigenwurz, komme aus Deutschland, habe jetzt die Chance, um die WM zu boxen. Ich freue mich darauf. Ich fühle mich gut. Wir haben uns gut vorbereitet. Es war eine kurze Vorbereitung, aber eine intensive. Und jetzt können wir uns eigentlich kaum erwarten auf den Kampf. Ich wurde hier gut aufgenommen in Nashville. Die Leute waren sehr freundlich. Also ich habe ein gutes Gefühl. Mein Team hat ein gutes Gefühl. Und wir sind bereit. Mein Name ist Vincent Feigenbutz. Ich komme aus Deutschland. Ich bin 24 Jahre alt. Ich bin sehr glücklich, dass ich in Nashville bin. Die Leute waren sehr nett zu mir. Wir sind bereit für den Kampf. Es war eine kurze, aber intensive Präparation. Auf eine kurze Notiz. Aber wir sind glücklich, dass ich hier bin. Take the opportunity. Thank you very much. Vincent Vangenboots, the challenger to this man. You know, when we talk about uh, things coming to fruition, dreams becoming a reality, the man to my right has had a vision from the very beginning of his professional career. Before we continue to elaborate, I have to acknowledge to his right his outstanding trainer, Justin Gamber, ladies and gentlemen. I think he's one of the fastest rising trainers in boxing. And I would be remiss if I wouldn't talk about Richie Plant, the father of Caleb Plant. What a journey that they have had together. For those of you who don't know, I heard a story about a 12-year-old young fighter who was in the kickboxing who was knocking out guys at 17, 18 years of age. He traveled all over the Midwest and participated in kickboxing tournaments, then got into boxing, and the rest has been history. A little over a year ago, he fought Jose Luis Uskatiki at 168 in Los Angeles. Nobody wanted to fight Uskatiki. 
Caleb Plant was the mandatory, and rather than take a tuna fight, he had a layoff of about, what, 13 months, Caleb? 13 months, and he went out, and he dominated Jose Luis Uscatiki. Nobody does that to him. Caleb Plant did it. Followed it up by wiping out Mike Lee in Las Vegas in July. And the one thing I'll tell you about Caleb Plant, ever since I've gotten the opportunity, the fortune to get to know him over the past five years, he said, I want to go home. I want to go to Nashville. This man loves this city so much. He lives in Las Vegas. I know he's got a very nice house with his lovely wife, Jordan Plant. And he wanted to get married. He could have gotten married anywhere in the world. But he got married here in Nashville, Tennessee. That's how much he loves this city. It is embedded into who he is as a man. And Nashville should be very proud of their world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me with great honor and pleasure to welcome 27 years of age from Ashland, Tennessee, Nashville, please stand up and welcome the IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, the undefeated Caleb Sweethands Plant. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out today. Really appreciate you coming out and supporting not only me, but um, all the other fighters on the card, and especially some of the hometown fighters we have, Austin Dulé. We also got Todd Tomlin in the back. And uh, I'm just grateful that you guys are here. I'd like to thank um, PBC and Fox for creating this beautiful platform. I want to thank uh, Al Heyman, my advisor, my manager, Louis Sakubis, also my team, Justin, my dad, my strength and conditioning coach, Larry Wade, um, my friends and family who are here. And uh, normally, I have a few key points that I want to hit and go over, but um, to be honest with you guys, I really didn't put none of that stuff down today. Uh, everything I'm saying is just, you know, from the heart. This is something that I have worked for literally my whole life. And um, I've sacrificed everything for this and this world title. And uh, since I was a kid, it was a dream of mine to not only fight in Nashville as a world champion, but to be defending my world title at the Bridgestone. And um, at just 19 and 0, soon to be 20 and 0, I get to do that. And um, I'm just grateful to be able to do it in front of all my friends and family and peers. I am willing to do whatever it takes to keep this world title. Forever, however long that I need to hold my breath in the water. I will do it. He can't hold his breath as long as me. He hasn't had to. Anyone who knows me, make sure you translate that. <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows he hasn't, uh, he hasn't had to hold his breath like I have. He can't hold his breath like I can. And you just heard him get up here and say they're already making excuses you know, we took this fight on short notice. He didn't take this fight on short notice. Don't believe that. We both had more, a world championship fight is eight weeks long. We've, ha we've had at least 10 weeks where we've both known about it. So he's already up here giving himself a way out. Oh, I was on short notice. No, you didn't. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> so I'm telling you, if you want to take that belt home to Germany, you're going to have to kill me. And I don't think that you're man enough to do that. So I'm telling you, this world title is saying right here in Nashville. Thank you. Caleb Platt, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk with the fighters and ask them a few questions. We'll start off with Diego Magdaleno. If they can go and pass the microphone over to uh, Diego. Diego, fighting Austin Dulé, you obviously have a great deal of experience. You fought for the world title on several occasions at 130 and 135. How much do you feel your experience is going to play a factor to your benefit on Saturday night against the young, hungry contender in Austin Dulé? Well, if you know anything about boxing, anybody here, um, you know it's all about IQ. 
you know what I mean, and, and the experiences that you do have and you do overcome, and it's learning from those. And I, that's one thing that I regrouped with, with Bones Adams, and I've learned, and Bones Adams himself said it. He goes, I put you in the ring to test you to see where you're at, and I put you in there with a bigger guy, two, two weight classes above you, with Blair Cobbs, who's rocking and rolling right now, and he's crafty, he's sharp, he's got, he's got reach, he's got, he's got everything you're going to be facing. And he was happy and he was proud of what I did. And I got, I got, you know, text messages later on after sparring and uh, of him motivating me and, and, and kind of giving me the grace. You know, it's, it's the reason why I'm here. I'm so confident um, coming into this fight because of what I've already put into the ring. You know what I mean? And this, this training camp was great. It was, um, it was by far, you know, one of the, the best training camps I've ever had in a long time. You know, and that, that was the lack of what uh, I had in the previous fights that I, that I was, uh, you know, where I suffered my, my, a year ago. But um, this, there's no excuses. There's uh, a motivated Diego and somebody who's ready to rock and roll. Well, Diego, good luck to you on Saturday night. Now, over to my right, Austin Dulé. Austin, you are fighting on the, the opening televised bout of Caleb Plant. You and Caleb have such a, a bond. I would say you guys are like brothers in, in my opinion. He has helped to mentor you and we've seen you come up through the ranks. Do you feel like Saturday night at the Bridgestone Arena here in Nashville against a tough competitor in Diego Magdaleno, that Saturday night will be your coming out party in front of all your family and friends and millions watching on Fox? Absolutely. You know, we're looking forward to the fight, um, especially being here in our hometown. You know, we're, we're ready. All right, Austin Dulé, he does all his talking inside the ring, ladies and gentlemen. Certainly has some style to him as well. Now to my left, our co-main event at 147, Abel Ramos and Brian Perella. Abel, it's no secret that Brian Perella and you, you both are aggressive fighters. You both like to stand and trade. Does that excite you knowing that you're not going to have to go very far to find the man standing across the ring from you, that you're likely going to be in the center of that ring going to battle? Um, yeah, it excites me. I mean, um, I think we both have styles that um, match up really good in, inside of the ring, and I think they match up for a good action-packed fight. Well, thank you very much, Abel Ramos, for Brian Perella to my right. Brian, for you, uh, fighting Abel Ramos uh, you know, you've had a couple stumbles in your career, but how good are you feeling? It really seems like you're hitting your stride, especially after what you were able to do against Dominic Dalton back in July of last year on FS1. Since I got out of the ring from that fight, we got right back to work. We've been training ever since, day in and day out, all day, every day. We added so many layers. You know, we like tiramisu. Uh, you know... <laughs> What can I say, man? We got over 140 rounds of sparring in this camp. Um, I did over 15 rounds straight sparring with different guys coming in. Um, you know, I'm a monster in this division. And Saturday night, I'm going to show it. We look forward to that matchup against Abel Ramos. Now we will go to the challenger to my left. Don't forget, Saturday night's event brought to you by Sweet Hands Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Sourland Promotions. Vincent Vegan Boots, as we have his translator of uh, Vincent. You're clearly the underdog heading into this fight, fighting Caleb Plant in his backyard. How much do you enjoy the factor, or what is your mindset knowing that you are such a significant underdog heading into your world title opportunity? Egal wo der Kampf ist, ich gehe dahin, wo der Kampf ist, ob es jetzt in seinem Hinterhaus ist oder sonst wo. Es ist nicht wichtig, wo der Kampf ist, ob es in der Hinterhaus oder in der Toilette ist. Komm durch den Kampf, in der Fight. Ja, und eben, für mich, mich freut es sehr, dass ich in Amerika boxen kann, weil es ist ja die Hochburg vom Boxen und es ist das Beste, was es gibt. Er ist sehr glücklich, dass ich die Opportunität habe, in den USA zu kämpfen, weil er die USA und es ist eine große Chance und eine große Chance für ihn. Es war immer sein Traum. Es war immer sein Traum. Well, we saw some comments yesterday at the open workouts that you talked about uh, that you were going to show Caleb something different, that you were going to be hopping around. Uh, can you explain and, and further that point? Uh, what does that mean? He's going to hop right on his ass. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> Wie 
Dieu aime pour aussi aimer Rémi. We just, okay, we just uh, also got information from the roads here and we was asked, hey, who know Caleb Plant here in Nashville? But from 100 people, one knew him. I was very surprised that nobody knew Caleb Plant here because of his backyard. I think his backyard is 45 miles elsewhere somewhere. The undercard guy is selling the tickets, I think, and our friends from the Music City Fire, they bought ringside a lot. So and we was just warned from the two or three guys we met after that we, um, that we get here a lot of trash talk and uh, we are sportsmen. We come to be as a guest. You are all our host. We want to be a good guest to you and uh, this is still a sport. You can make a lot of trash talk and uh, pff, talk a lot of shit to us. Later in the ring, Vincent will uh, give the answer on this shit. All right, well, now, Caleb, how would you respond to what he just said? He said that nobody know knows saying. who you are here and that he's pretty much saying that the one selling tickets is Austin Dulay. What's your response to what we just heard from Vincent Vegan Boots? I don't think he even knows what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I mean, if uh, what they're worried about is who's selling tickets and who ain't, then uh, it sounds like they're not focused on the task at hand. So I can promise you that he's got a tall order in front of him and he should focus on that. So uh, all the, I'm a guest and you're my host and you need to be nice and I don't know what he's talking about. So to be honest, I don't really, I couldn't hear much of what he said. So other than you telling me about tickets, he needs to focus on the task at hand because uh, he's got a world champion in front of him, someone who's willing to do whatever it takes to get his hand raised. So uh, he should focus on that. <laughs> well, you look in impeccable shape at the open workouts yesterday. I would have to say, I mean, you get, just continue to get better in the ring and also physically you are trained or you, your strength and conditioning coach, Larry Wade, is around here somewhere. Where is Larry? You're a fantastic strength and conditioning coach. You look unbelievable physically. Mm -hmm. Is this the best that you've ever felt heading into a world title fight? Um, absolutely, and that's what he needs to focus on. Uh, this is the sharpest that I've ever boxed. This is um, anyone who knows me knows I make weight easy. I don't have to work hard to make weight. Um, I'm boxing super sharp right now. We've had great, the best sparring partners that we've had yet uh, come in for camp. Um, and uh, it's going to make them fight, you know, easy on Saturday. So. Uh, I'm just focused on him and focused on keeping this belt. That's what's going to happen. Have you thought about, and we talked about four years ago, and, and still to this day, one of my favorite knockouts of all time happened to be when you knocked out a Colombian kid, a Colombian fighter, with a vicious uppercut to the body, put him away in Fort Lauderdale. That was four years ago in June. After that, we talked about, and we said, we were discussing things, and we said, and you told me, I want to go home. At some point, yeah. I'm going home to Nashville, yeah. and now you're coming home as a world champion. Have you thought about what that ring walk is going to be like, the emotion, the energy that you're going to feel when the Bridgestone Arena is going to be loud and rocking, all to see you as the main event? Um, it's going to be a spectacular moment. Um, this is my, all my life's work coming down to one moment. Uh, this is the most important fight of my life, and I trained as such. Um, I push myself to exhaustion, um, and I'm telling you guys, I'm a 110% prepared to do whatever I have to do to, um, to get my hand raised. And uh, like I said, these people was on my social media, oh, we're coming for you, we're coming for you, I'm, going, I'm coming for you, Vince is going to knock you out. And then they get the fight, and then I, I start to reply, oh, well, he talks too much crap, we want, to, we want him to be a good host, we're your guests. <laughs> so... He sounded like a crybaby to me. And finally, Caleb, your prediction for Saturday night in your hometown here of Nashville, Tennessee, PBC on Fox, 8 Eastern, 7 local time, 5 Pacific time. Your prediction. And still. And like I said, just like I said in my last fight, uh, he, either he can wave the white flag or I'll wave it for him because uh, this fight's not going 12 rounds.
Ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set for Saturday night, PBC on Fox. Caleb Platt making his homecoming, putting his world title on the line. We will now have the fighters pose off for the ceremonial stare down. Thank you very much to all the media for joining us. We'll see you at the weigh-in tomorrow, and then on Saturday at the Bridgestone Arena here in Nashville, it's PBC on Fox. Stay down, sir. <laughs>